Welcome to Chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug and in this video we're learning about the ways that liquids and gases relate to each other and how they have, uh, have uh, various characteristics. Now the first characteristic of a liquid is its vapor pressure. Now what is a vapor pressure? It is the pressure of a vapor or a gas that pushes back down on a liquid. So if we take a look at this picture here, we can see that there's a liquid in, in, in this flask and we've put a stopper on it so this is kind of a closed system and there's some of the of that vapor that escapes the, the, the liquid there so that means that there's some evaporation taking place so the liquid evaporates and it's up here in this part of the flask but guess what those vapor particles are pushing back down on the on the liquid so that's what we call vapor pressure. Every liquid has a vapor pressure. You know, if you have a liquid that's evaporating more, and they have a lot of evaporation, that means you're going to have a lot of vapor, so you have a lot of vapor pressure. There's some liquids that don't evaporate very well, and so uh, they are not going to produce a lot of vapor, so you have a low vapor pressure. You know, we can talk about how the vapor pressure of liquids compare to each other. Now, if we look at another factor or characteristic of liquids, it's intermolecular forces. And these are the forces that make molecules stick together. We'll talk more about those uh, in, uh, or I should say later in this video. Some molecules have very strong intermolecular forces. They stick together very well. And guess what? It's, there are some molecules that have very weak intermolecular forces. I'd like for you to think about this for a second. If something has strong intermolecular forces, what is its vapor pressure going to be like? Is it going to be high or is it going to be low? Think about that. We have strong intermolecular forces. That means the molecules stick together very well and they're not going to evaporate very much, are they? They're going to be sticking together in that liquid phase, and so you're not going to have a whole lot of vapor up here. So we're going to say it has a low vapor pressure. Strong IMF, strong intermolecular forces, uh, correlate to low vapor pressure. Well, guess what? That means that if something has uh, strong, I'm sorry, not we just said that, if something has weak intermolecular forces, well, that means the molecules don't stick together very well, do they? So they're able to you know, fly off very easily and become a, a gas or a vapor very quickly, very easily. And so you're going to have a lot of vapor. You'll have a high vapor pressure. So I want you to see that there's a relationship between these two factors here. The stronger the intermolecular forces, the lower the vapor pressure of the substance. Now, here's another word that we use sometimes in chemistry volatile. This is a word that's used, it means a lot of different things in different contexts, but for chemistry it means it has a high vapor pressure at ordinary room temperatures. So perhaps we can think about things that evaporate very easily. Maybe you've felt acetone or nail polish remover on your skin. It evaporates very quickly, it feels cold on your skin, doesn't it? Because you know evaporation is a cooling process, it evaporates very quickly so we say it has a high vapor pressure. And there are some things that have a low vapor pressure, and so they're not very volatile. You know, things like uh, mercury, they have a relatively uh, low vapor pressure. They're not volatile compared to some other things. Now, the word boiling point, we talked about that in the last video, that liquids boil at a certain boiling point. Well, we can actually measure what that is and say exactly what that means. The boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of a liquid equals the surrounding atmospheric pressure. So that means that you know, as you heat something up, the molecules move faster and faster and faster, and more of them can escape and become a gas. And so as you raise the temperature, you actually raise the vapor pressure of the liquid. You know, so that pressure is going up and up and up. And you can actually get that vapor pressure so high, it equals the surrounding atmospheric pressure, you know, which at sea level on a normal day is about 760 millimeters of mercury. 
So that's the boiling point. Whenever you can raise the pressure, or I should say that get the temperature up to the point where the vapor pressure equals the surrounding atmospheric pressure. Now this contraption here is a pressure cooker. Perhaps you've seen one of these or even used it in the past. If you increase the pressure inside that chamber there, well, guess what? You're also increasing the boiling point inside there. So it allows food to, to, to be cooked more quickly. Now, what do intermolecular forces have to do with properties of liquids or the other properties of liquids we've talked about? Well, strong intermolecular forces mean that you're going to have a low vapor pressure. We already talked about that. It means it's not going to be very volatile. It has a low volatility. And guess what? If something has a strong intermolecular force, it's going to have a high boiling point as well. You're going to have to really crank up a lot of heat there to force these molecules to boil away. On the other hand, if you have something with weak intermolecular forces, that means it's going to be the opposite. You'll have a high vapor pressure like we've already said. You're going to have a high volatility and you're going to have a low boiling point because you know the molecules don't stick together very well. It's going to be very easy to crank the, uh, the vapor pressure up to the point where it's, it equals atmospheric pressure. It's going to boil away very easily. So we have some examples there as well. Perhaps some examples you've heard of. Now I have a diagram here. This is called a vapor pressure diagram. And what I've done here, or what we see on this diagram rather, is that we've plotted the vapor pressures of three different liquids over, or I should say, as a uh, function of temperature. So we have diethyl ether, and then we have ethanol, and then we have water. So let's answer some questions about the graph. So first of all, what is the pressure of diethyl ether at 40 degrees Celsius? Well, this is basically just reading the, the graph. We go over to the, the graph for dieth diethyl ether and find 40 degrees Celsius, which is right here. And we just go straight up on the graph. And where does that meet? It meets right here. So that is, where is that? Well, it's right at 900 tor, or 900 millimeters of mercury. So I'm going to write that down here. 900 tor. That's the vapor pressure. Just read the graph. Now, what is the boiling point of water at a pressure of 500 tor? Well, we know that uh, we can just read this graph and find out what that is. So we find 500 tor, which is right here, and go over to water. And the curve for water is the third one here, so it's right there. And sure enough, that's the spot. It looks like it's right at 90 degrees Celsius. You know, normally the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius at normal pressures, right? At normal uh, sea level pressures of 760 torr. But if you're perhaps on a mountain where the pressure's lower, well, guess what? The boiling point of water is going to be lower. It doesn't mean that, you know, it just means that the boiling water there is not as hot. Okay, we'll find an example of that here in a minute. Which of these liquids has the weakest intermolecular forces? Well, once again, let's think back to our diagram that we said earlier. The weaker intermolecular forces correspond to higher vapor pressures, right? Because the molecules don't stick together as well. So just uh, pick a temperature. Let's say 20 degrees Celsius. The one that has the weakest intermolecular forces would be the one that has the highest vapor pressure. So which one is that? Well, at 20 degrees, the one that has the highest vapor pressure by far is this one right here. It's like way above the others. And that would be diethyl ether. So we can write that there. Diethyl ether would have the weakest intermolecular forces. I guess that means water would have the highest, wouldn't it? Now, on Mount Everest, the air pressure is really low, only 230 torr. What is the boiling point of water? Well, once again, we just take our graph here and find 230 torr. So that's around, around here somewhere. And we just go right over to the curve for water. And it looks like it's right here, somewhere in that neighborhood. So we go down, and that seems to be right at 70 degrees Celsius. We can say that 70 degrees Celsius 
is the boiling point of water. So that's hot, but uh, not nearly as hot as 100 degrees Celsius. Now, I guess that means that if we lower the pressure enough, we could actually get water to boil at room temperature, couldn't we? So think about that. If we got the pressure low enough, we could boil water at 20 degrees Celsius, room temperature. So what pressure would you need to get that to? Well, here's Here's the curve for water. So what, what is that? It's, we're talking about very, very low pressure. So if you got the pressure down to about, oh, let's say maybe 10 or 15 torr, you would be able to boil water at room temperature. Like I said, it doesn't mean the water's hot. It just means it's boiling. It's, it's, and you'll see those bubbles. You'll see it churning. We can actually do that in the laboratory. So it's a pretty neat little diagram here that we have. So I hope you learned something about the factors that affect liquids. We talked about vapor pressure, we talked about intermolecular forces, boiling point, and volatility, and how all four of these are related to each other. If you learned something, please smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already done so. Like I said, I'm Jeremy Krug, I teach chemistry, and this is my chemistry YouTube channel. So hope to see you again on here where, where we can learn some more chemistry together.